Hi everyone, Byron Martin here at Logies Greenhouses, and today we're going to talk about some philodendrons, and two of our probably most popular varieties are the black philodendron, known as black and gold, or philodendron melanochrysum, and philodendron sidori. And a couple of things about them, there's a juvenile stage to each one of these, and that's generally the plant that we grow and that we ship. And then there's also a mature stage. This is not mature yet, but you can see these leaves are starting to elongate. And on the sidori here, you can see the very large leaves that have formed from these smaller plants that have developed. In terms of culture, they're really quite easy to grow as long as the light quality is good. Although philodendrons are known to be grown in very low light and deep shade, and they do grow that way in a tropical forest. Increasing your light a little bit will give strength to them. So these plants here actually have been grown hung up in the top of the greenhouses. Now the greenhouses have some shade on them, but they really thrive when we give them that sort of intermittent level of light between full sun and shade, which is partial sun, basically. They're actually fairly fast growing when it comes to their activity in the summertime. This time of year we're in the winter and so things have slowed down. And they're also climbers, so in that case we've got to do something with them. Now these plants here are some of our mother plants and they've been grown in hangers that are hanging and they kind of drape down. This particular one here has been grown in the greenhouse and we've staked it and so it has actually started out way at the bottom of this plant with tiny little leaves and a small stem and as it grew up it turned into a mature specimen and we simply used a stake and some ties to hold it up. This has been in the greenhouses now for almost two years and you can see that's how long it takes to really get a mature specimen of that. Now what makes them large is when they go vertical to keep them small you need to have them draping over trailing or climbing horizontally and that plant will stay at a containable size indefinitely. One of the things that you want to make sure you do is feed them during the active growing season, not this time of year, but in the summertime. And for that, we use a balanced fertilizer at a moderate rate. And that's just generally because we're under lower light. So always the rule of thumb, the higher the light, the more feed, the lower the light, the less feed. And what is a balanced fertilizer? That can be a soluble salt fertilizer that's got relatively even numbers. And you can get way into the fertilizer thing with high uh, phosphorus levels for blooming. Um, another way to deal with um, fertilization is through slow release. Those are some of the pearls that you buy and you sprinkle them on the top of the soil and they leach in as you water or use organics. Organics are generally made of um, animal byproducts, so you want to make sure when you put them on the soil you scratch them in and then water them so they're not just laying on the top and the odor comes off into the growing area. And also in terms of watering, these are sort of semi-epiphytic plants. They really like that dry period between watering. Bring them to surface dryness, thoroughly water them, surface dryness, thoroughly water them, and you really can't go wrong with that. And you know, philodendrons are very tolerant to lower light, but also to reduced humidity. I mean, they, can, they do pretty well in the house. And this melanochrysum here has been in our collection longer than I've been alive, and it's always been a house plant. It, you go back 50, 60, 70 years, and it was always a house plant. And people would grow it, not as the mature specimen, but they'd let it trail over in baskets and so on, known as the black philodendron, and did very well and still does as an indoor plant. The same with our sidori here. This is really a great plant for indoor culture, mainly because obviously it's a philodendron, has this nice heavy textured leaves to them where it can withstand, like right now, the humidity in the homes is very low and it can withstand that low humidity. One of the things you can do when they get too big is you can propagate them and it's actually quite easy. Here we have a sidori that for some reason this lived in this little tiny pot for a very, very long time. So one of the things you can do in managing this is you could um, cut it back. and. Um, we're going to do that and also show you how you can make more of them, which is always exciting. 
So the first thing we want to do is we want to take out our pruning shears and we're going to disinfect them. And this is really, really important. Here at Logis, whenever we go into propagation, we always disinfect the cutting tools, mainly pruning shears or knives, with alcohol. And this is um, pretty much straight ethanol, 70% ethanol alcohol. And now we have reduce the possibility of transmitting particularly viruses from plant to plant. This plant right here has got a lot of cuttings on it and there's one leaf right there, there's another one up here. So we're going to make the cut just above that. Now philodendrons actually have a node, that's the growing point on the stem, that's not really like most plants. Most plants it's tucked right down into that leaf node right here. These are really up a ways on the stem and if you look at them um, Closely, you can actually see that as you're making the cutting. So you gotta make sure when you're cutting them, you don't cut that off. And what we do here is we can, if we're really you know, trying to get as many cuttings as we could off of this, we would cut each node, which would be like this. And then the place where a philodendron roots is right at the node. It doesn't root down on this stem right here. It ro roots right at that node. If you look at this right here, see all these roots are coming out. So you have to make sure that that area right there is below the soil when you strike it. Sphagnum moss is really a great growing media. And for anybody propagating and doing all kinds of other things with crazy plants, you know, you can use regular potting mix. It would work. We love sand here at Logies for rooting really hard things. But for the aeroids, sphagnum moss is great. And you just want to make sure you tuck that in so that it's not lo loose and wiggly, that it really is held on. The other way to take the cutting is to do a two-node cutting. And you could even do more, but two nodes is probably enough. And so we make the cut. We're way above where that eye might be. Actually, if you look right there, you can see that growing eye up on the stem a little bit. I scraped off some of the older tissue here, and you can see there's a little shield right there. So that's where the new growth is going to come out. So once we've done that, we've got two nodes on it. Um, this is going to give a little more oomph to the plant in terms of tissue for it to get nutrients and energy out of. Sometimes longer nodes are better, and we're going to push that down in there. Now, I didn't use hormone on this. You could actually use a number two hormone, but believe it or not, philodendrons, they root so easily. I mean, look at this plant. It's just filled with roots coming out everywhere and nothing was done to it. They actually will root fine without dipping them. And within uh, two or three weeks, you'll see roots initiating fully into the meteor. And usually it's about a month before they can be brought out and put into a growing area. So now we're left with a prune back plant. And this plant actually needs to be repotted. It has um, a very well developed root system, which mm, it's actually making the actually is expanding the pot, which was square into round. There's a nice healthy root system right there. Now we're going to put it in a larger pot. So here we have a cedar plank that has been um, potted actually. And we're going to simply dig a hole in our potting mix here and plant our philodendron. We can remove the stake that has been in there for many months. And now we're going to just simply tie that to this board to hold it in place until that bud that's, at the, that's dormant right down here at this node is going to activate and start growing out. And as it develops, it, we'll tie it up against this board one more time just to make sure that it knows it's got something to stick to. And then it will get the idea that it needs to grow up from a juvenile into an adult. After we're done, we give this a good drink. That stabilizes everything. And then we put that into a growing area for it to develop. Melanochrysum and Sidori are two really great philodendrons to grow for the home and actually quite entertaining in their ability to climb. If you'd like more information, visit us at logis.com.